Today, we'll discuss about Evans syndrome. Uh, it is an autoimmune disorder, uh, which is characterized by the autoimmune hemolytic anemia, along with immune thrombocytopenia, and in some cases, uh, autoimmune neutropenia as well. So these um, autoimmune hemolytic anemia and ITP, they can occur together, or uh, one can occur first, and then subsequently the next can occur. This is a rare syndrome. However, it is often severe and sometimes even fatal as well. Uh, it's uh, marked by frequent relapses. It has high therapy burden and there is increased risk of infection and thrombosis, uh, which significantly affects the survival of the patients with Evans syndrome. This can be classified into primary and the secondary. If uh, the cause is unknown, uh, it's usually labeled as primary Evans syndrome. Uh, however, if it's associated with any other underlying diseases, then it's uh, considered to be secondary. So some of the causes for the secondary Evans syndrome include autoimmune lymphoproliferative syndrome, common variable immunodeficiency, usually in the children, and it can be associated with other autoimmune diseases like SLE, RA, it can be associated with viral infections like HIV, hepatitis C, Sometimes it can occur after hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, and it can even occur in lymphomas like non Hodgkin lymphoma and patients with chronic uh, lymphocytic leukemia. So talking about the etiology, it's um, basically the exact mechanism is not known, uh, but uh, what happens is B cells, they produce autoantibodies that attack the red blood cells, platelets, and the uh, white blood cells. And most likely it's related to the excessive immune dysregulation. Now, recently, there are some molecular theories, uh, and uh, they advocate that this uh, Evans syndrome can occur because of the deficiencies of CTLA4, LRBA, or TPP2. It can be associated with the decreased CD4 to CD8 ratio. Uh, in cases of the autoimmune hemolytic anemia, the IgG antibodies uh, they react with the RBC surface antigens at the body temperature, and in cases of ITP. The immune system is directed against the glycoprotein 2B3A on the platelets. So for the diagnosis, history is very important. Uh, we need to take a detailed history to determine the risk factors for developing Evans syndrome. Like we need to ask about the infection, malignancies, history of autoimmune diseases, history of recent vaccinations, or history of recent use of drugs, as well as the family history of immune disorders is also very important because uh, these histories will help us to uh, rule out the secondary causes of Evans syndrome. The symptoms depend upon the presence of either anemia or because of the thrombocytopenia. So if the anemia is predominant, um, then the patient can present with fatigue, pallor, dizziness, shortness of breath, or limitation of physical activity. If thrombocytopenia is predominant, patient can present with easy bruising, like in this picture, or there can be bleeding from the gum, epistaxis, or patient can bleed from the minor injuries as well. And if uh, neutropenia is present, patient can present with the recurrent infections. Uh, regarding the signs, you can see uh, the signs of anemia like pallor. There can be the signs of hemolysis like jaundice. Patient can sometimes present with splenomegaly or hepatomegaly. And there can be the features of thrombocytopenia like petechi or purpura. Sometimes patients can present with the severe manifestations and they might include catastrophic bleeding like the intraabdominal bleeding, intracranial bleeding, or patient can sometimes present with a massive hemolysis and this can lead to the renal failure. And it's also been associated with the venous thromboembolism. And sometimes if the neutropenia is more prominent, patient can present with severe infections. The differential diagnosis is broad. Basically, we need to rule out the other diseases like autoimmune lymphoproliferative syn uh, syndrome, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. This is a very uh, important differential diagnosis of the Evans syndrome, and it should be considered in all the patients. Similarly, we need to think about other autoimmune diseases like SLE, antiphospholipid syndrome, Jogren syndrome, common variable immunodeficiency, IgA deficiency, lymphomas like non Hodgkin lymphomas, and the chronic uh, lymphocytic leukemia and paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. So these all differentials should be considered. For the evaluation, we can start with CBC. CBC will definitely uh, usually show the anemia, thrombocytopenia, and sometimes neutropenia as well. And then the uh, next part of evaluation is we need to evaluate, uh, evaluate for the presence of hemolysis. We can do the LDS, which can be elevated. Similarly, haptoglobulin might be low. Uh, there might be increased indirect bilirubin, 
reticulocyte count might be increased. Similarly, this direct antiglobulin test is a very important test in diagnosing this warm autoimmune hemolytic anemia, and it will be strongly positive in cases of uh, Evans syndrome. Similarly, in blood picture, we can see the poikilocytosis and spherocy spherocytes. Um, this picture shows the direct antiglobulin test. So in patients with Evans syndrome, usually the RBCs are coated with the antibodies. So when we add the anti-human antibodies, uh, there will be the RBC agglutination. And this leads to the po positive um, direct Combs test. And strongly positive direct Combs test is a very important test for the diagnosis of warm autoimmune hemolytic anemia, which is a part of the Evans syndrome. Similarly, in the blood film, we can see the apoiculocytosis. Uh, this poikilocytosis means the RBCs of the various shapes can be seen in the blood picture. And similarly, we can see the presence of spherocytes in the blood smear. So these are the features of um, Evans syndrome in the uh, blood film. Other tests which we can do for the evaluation include antiplatelet and antigranulocyte antibodies. These tests are neither specific nor sensitive. So they are usually not done in routine basis, but can be done in the selected patients. And then we have to do other tests to rule out the other diseases and rule out the secondary causes of Evans syndrome. And some of them include like CT scan of the chest, abdomen and pelvis to look for any malignancies. We need to do the blood picture to rule out the TTP and other other diseases. Similarly, we can do the vi uh, test for the viral diseases like HIV, hepatitis C, hepatitis B. Similarly, we need to uh, rule out the SLE for that we can do ANA, DST, and A. Similarly, we need to rule out the APLA for that we can do lupus anticoagulant and antiphospholipid antibodies. Similarly, we need to do the serum protein electrophoresis, protein uh, immunofixation and immunoglobulin concentration to rule out any immunoglobulin deficiencies. Similarly, we need to do the circulating lymphocyte uh, phenotyping and we can do the flow cytometry for uh, the paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. And in certain cases, we might need to uh, proceed for the bone marrow uh, aspiration and biopsy, basically to rule out the possible myelodysplastic syndrome and other pathologies. First line treatment is a uh, steroid or IVIG. Usually prednisolone is the preferred agent and it can be given at the dose of 1 to 2 mg per kg per day. Usually the tapering is rapid or sudden discontinuation can be done uh, in case the Evans syndrome is associated more with the thrombocytopenia. And the tapering should be slow uh, if the anemia is more prominent. In cases of the emergency or in the life-threatening situations, we can opt for the IV methylprednisolone. Similarly, IVIG can be used as a first-line therapy. And in some cases, uh, corticosteroid and IVIG can be combined, basically in the uh, life-threatening situations. And the second-line treatments are um, reserved for those who are refractory to the standard treatment or if patients are steroid-dependent. So the preferred options include rituximab, splenectomy, and the immunosuppressant agents like uh, cyclosporine and mycophenolate. Other agents which can be used include the um, this uh, TPO receptor agonist. Usually they are used when the features of ITP are more prominent. We can use the erythropoietin. Like they are used if uh, there is no adequate amount of reticulocytosis following the hemolysis. Similarly, in certain cases, we can uh, use the plasma exchange or sometimes you can even use the monoclonal antibodies against CD52. Rituximab is the preferred second line agent versus splenectomy. Uh, it can be given at the dose of 375 milligram per meter square uh, per week for four weeks, or we can use um, 1000 milligram on day one and day 15. And rituximab shows a better response than the splenectomy. And the one advantage is it can be combined with the steroids. And the next second line option is splenectomy. However, nowadays it's uh, not uh, performed frequently because it has a low response rate. Uh, it has high relapse rate and there is increased risk of sepsis. So it's not a preferred second line agent. Next agent which we can use is danazole. It's frequently used as a corticosteroid sparing agent. Similarly, we can use other immunosuppressive drugs like uh, cyclosporine and mycophenolate mofetil. And in severe cases, when patient is not responding to any of the medical therapy, then patient can undergo hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. And for the symptomatic treatment, if there is a severe anemia, patient uh, might require the packed red cell transfusion. Or sometimes if the, uh, there is a severe bleeding manifestation and if you need to stop the bleeding immediately, we might need to use the platelet uh, transfusion as well. 
This algorithm summarizes the treatment uh, of uh, Evans syndrome. So the preferred treatment is prednisolone and it can be combined with IVIG. And if there is a response, um, then we can gradually taper off the dose of the steroid and it, we can stop it after three to six months. However, if, after reducing the dose of prednisolone, if there is early relapse or loss of response, then we can move to the second line therapy. And if patient doesn't respond to the steroid from the beginning, then also we can start the rituximab. So if patient responds to the rituximab, we can continue that. If patient doesn't respond to the rituximab, then uh, they can be treated with the other immunosuppressive agents like mycophenol or mofetil or cyclosporine. And if they respond, they can continue that. Otherwise, they can be enrolled in the clinical trial or they can be treated with other third-line agents. Similarly, sometimes uh, after the failure of the rituximab, uh, we can proceed for the splenectomy if patients uh, meet the criteria for that. Talking about the prognosis, even with treatment, uh, response can be variable and relapses are very common. Uh, in a study, only 32% of the patients were in the remission at a median follow-up of around 4.8 years. And these patients are more prone to developing the other autoimmune diseases like SLE. And the overall mortality rate is approximately 20%. And uh, it's attributed mostly to the severe infections and thrombosis. And one thing which we need to understand is secondary Evans syndrome has poor prognosis than the primary Evans syndrome. So these are the references which we used for making our video. Thank you for watching our videos. Please subscribe to our channel for more videos.